Branch Russell and Dave Brown, and by golly, our very special guest, and we're delighted to have him here today, and that's Gordon Soley. Gordon, we got a jam packed one coming up today. We sure do, and you know, one thing, of course, uh, I think that everybody's very concerned about, we will have an update on uh, Mr. Constant, who was injured here at the hands of the interns last week, yeah. and uh, that's as vicious a tag team combination as I've ever seen. By golly, I'll tell you one thing for a living fact, those interns make no bones about it. They came in, Troy Graham said, sick them, and they did that unnecessarily. We've got the uh, national tag champs, the long riders will be in here today, a non-title bout, but they'll be in here right. on our championship wrestling. Yep, and we've got a new pair, too, that are being brought in by Jimmy Hart, I understand. That's the Terminators, and that has to be a dangerous combination okay. just by the name alone. If Hart's got anything to do with it, you know, doggone well, we got trouble. A team that I'm going to be interested again to see, although we do have a little <laughs> difficulty keeping them separated, the Batten Twins, Mark and Brad, will be in here today. <laughs> right. Too. And they're a fine young combination. I look for a great future for them. And uh, another one that, well, we don't have time. We'll tell you about that. We're going to get it on. We'll be back with all of the action coming up here right now. Let's take time out for this. Well, these uh, interns, of course, have proven to be an exceptionally dangerous and uh, vindictive team, I might say. But uh, recently, they went up against uh, the AWA Southern Champions, the Fabs, and, and it was sort of a disastrous time. Oh, boy, what a match that was and a half. We got some highlights of it, Gordon. Let's take a look and see what we've got. <laughs> That great big metal stand while a referee is in the ring with Lane and the other intern. Steve Curran being mauled with that ring rope standard. Once again, he's coming back up. And the intern right on him while the referee's out here. Stan Lane down to his rescue. Really getting nasty and mean now in this title defense. But let me tell you, these fabs are up to it. Kern in serious trouble, though. Slammed off the ropes as he peeled him down one, two, and Dave kicks out. What a lot of just plain guts this current has got. There's a 15 minute call with 45 to go and Stan Lane, who had made the tag, about to get into it with a referee. The referee did not see it. And he in turns, uh-oh. Referee Jerry Calhoun down. Turns head slammed together. The elbow and Stan going at him. Steve coming back. Once again, the referee's down. Steve has the cover while Stan holds the other intern off, but the referee is down. When Steve swung the intern around, his feet kicked the referee right in the head. Calhoun. Rolling in pain as he comes up, but the other end turn grabs and nails Kern from behind. And the fabulous ones reverse it and slam the interns into each other. Oh. Look at these fabs come back. Steve makes a cover. But the intern loaded his mask up and ripped Kern while the referee was wanting to stand out. Uh-oh, that's it. Well, that's the way it went. The Southern Tag belts uh, right now. If, yeah, if we can get him around here. Or... Can you get around here and talk to this man? You know I'll I get around be. here. 
I should be the happiest guy in the world, baby, but I'm not happy. You know why? Because I haven't been happy since March the 28th, baby. If I tell you what, you know it's going to take a lot to make me happy because this is just a start, baby, for what my interns is going to do because Jerry Lawler, Jimmy Valiant, Jimmy Hart, hey, <laughs> Jerry Jarrett, Eddie Marlin, old Christine Jarrett up there, Jerry Jarrett's mammy, all of them, I want you right here in this wheelchair, baby. I want you right here in this wheelchair where the dream machine has been since March the 28th, baby. What do you got to say about that? I let them out. I told you that they would drop the fabs like cold turkey. That's just exactly what they did, baby. I said, sick them, interns. Sick them, baby. They dropped them just like cold turkey. Yeah, well, you got a big win. There's no doubt they got Did the they belt. get their hands raised? They One, two, it. three. Did they win? Yeah. Yes or no? I see the huh? belt. You see the belt? That's right. The belts are going to stay around the waist of the interns, baby. I guarantee you, when you see us lose, any fall, we will leave this territory because they're not going to be beaten, baby. You can put that in your little pipe and smoke it, baby. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You're putting a heavy load right there because, brother, you got some tag team competition around here, and it's not over with, hey, with one match. Hey, that's what you said last week, tag team competition. That's what you said last week just, just on the video. You said, hey, look, look at the fouls come back, man. Look at the fouls come back. But they, yeah, they come back, all right. They come back to get beat, baby. One, two, three. Well, fine. That's a good idea. Well, Gordon, that's the interns. That's the attitude of Troy Graham. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do right now is uh, take a look at uh, uh, the situation uh, that happened last week with the interns. I'm referring, of course, to when they went up against uh, Constant and Ashley uh, in their match. Uh, they used the pile driver outside of the ring, and, of course, they put Constant out of action. Uh, he has uh, suffered some damage to the cervical area of the neck, and uh, he's going to be out of action for a while. But I thought, uh, rather than try and explain all of that to you, let's go back in time and take a look at that incident as it occurred here last week. Nasty as it was. Mm. Brother I was whipped, caught him into a high, high backdrop. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Outside the ring, outside the ring, a pile driver under the concrete. A pile driver under the concrete. And he's got him, and he looks like he's going to go for another one. Another pile driver. Well, they brought out a stretcher now uh, for uh, Steve Constant, and they're being exceptionally careful as how they handle him. His, uh, the cervical area of the neck, I'm afraid, has been pretty badly jammed. And one of the prime things they must do is uh, cut down the movement as best they can on it. They've got... Um, uh, young Steve Constance on the stretcher now, and they're trying to adjust him. They've got him outside of the ring. And I think that you can see when you look back at a pile driver. Uh-oh, look out. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Just a minute. Oh, brother, these interns, brother, I'll tell you what. Sadistic is all it is. They are uh, likely uh, suspects for... Uh, well, Eddie Marlin trying to restore over order over there, and uh, I'll tell you what, I have seen some wild men in my life, but these interns... Fifty pounds. Oh, where, where's our opponent? Look at him over there. Look at him. Hey, get in the he's ring, on boy. the way. At 250 pounds, now wrestling out of Memphis, Tennessee, with his manager Jimmy Hart. 
Jimmy Hart Jr. And going against him at 229 pounds out of Louisville, Kentucky. Introducing Tim Ashley. Ashley, one fall, 10 minute time limit match. The referee, Jerry Calhoun. All right, so Dave Brown leaving the ring now, and so it's Tim Ashley moving out against uh, Jimmy Hart Jr. One fall, 10 minute time limit. And so uh, this should prove to be interesting indeed. Of course, with Jimmy Hart anywhere near the ring area, that means that uh, the opponent is in for a tough time. Uh, he's going through the, uh, the all the basics, telling the referee, be sure and tell him. Look at that. He's saying no punching, don't kick with a point of the toe, and all this jazz. Hart has now become uh, the official official. Yeah. Which you'd like to think that he is every time he gets nearer. Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart, and uh, now uh, some last minute words and encouragement to uh, uh, Jimmy Hart Jr. And it is uh, Tim Ashley waiting to uh, have at it with him. He immediately walked back from the referee and starts telling. Uh, Jimmy Jr. go out there and choke him, gouge him, and all that. All the things he told the referee to tell Ashley not to do. Ashley in the purple trunks. Squares up, watches uh, Jimmy Hart Jr. carefully. They lock up collar and elbow. Checking each other out for uh, strength, for balance. And a good block by Ashley on the break. And he drives a knee to the midsection. And so Jimmy Hart Jr. has got some problems now. Beautifully executed power slam. Hooks the far leg. Got the three. Whoa! He got the three count. Outstanding. Outstanding, brother. You talk about record time. Let's take another look at uh, Tim Ashley. Here you see him. Irish whip off the ropes. Catches uh, Jimmy Hart Jr. coming off the ropes. Beautifully executed power slam. Hooking that far leg has him down for the count of three. No question about that being a good solid pinfall. Second time we've seen Ashley use that power slam, Gordon. And brother, I'll tell you one thing, a young in the business, but he sure has learned that one well. He and Jimmy Hart Jr. is some big tough son of a gun. Okay, we had such a short one. Why don't we go ahead with our next bout right away? All right, let's take a look at the Batten Twins in action now. So once again, let's turn it over to our ring announcer, Dave Brown. All right, we're ready to go. This one's going to be a one fall 15 minute time limit match. And introducing, first of all, at a total weight of 444 pounds from Memphis, Tennessee, Big Lou, his partner from Parts Unknown, the Invader. Going against him, total weight 454 pounds from Charleston, West Virginia, Mark and Brad Batten. One fall 15 minute time limit, Jerry Calhoun, the referee. All right, the Batten brothers, uh, identical twins, moving out against uh, this combination of Big Lou and the Invader. One fall, 15-minute time limit. There's the bell. And uh, now you've got me, and I don't know which one is which. <laughs> At least, you know what I thought? I saw a glimpse of the, uh, of the pad on the arm, the brace on the arm. I thought, well, we'll be able to tell them apart to take Gordon. But they both got them. <laughs> They got me. They've got me on this one. There's no question about it. But it's uh, Batten and Batten against uh, Big Blue, and the tag is made. Batten moves in, takes the side headlock. Good. That's suit. got to be Brad in there now. I'm almost sure. I think he's got four more gray hairs than than Mark has, <laughs> Gordon. All right. Once again, they move out now. Big Blue circles his man. Tall, rangy individual, but he's caught in a side headlock. And again, uh, okay, now this is Mark then, right? Right. Okay, Mark Batten in there, and he's got the uh, hammer lock on Big Lou. He's got a uh, chicken wing on that, a partial wing on it. Keeping the hammer lock now, brings it down to a full arm dragon twist. Oh, yeah. Excellent inside move to a fireman carry takedown. Well executed. Back to the basics, and that's what it says on the marquee outside. It says wrestling, and that's exactly what you'll find with these uh, Batten brothers. They are an impressive combination. Really enjoy watching them. Uh, something coming up a little bit later, uh, Mark, of course, was teamed with uh, Johnny Wilhoyt in the new generation. Johnny, whose leg was 
very badly injured, is back in action. We'll see him a little later on today, Gordon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I've heard a lot about Will Hoyt. All right, Batten keeps uh, the arm bar now on Big Lou. One fall, 15 minute time limit in this match. Once again, the Battens have tagged up. The Battens have been tagging in and out with great regularity, keeping themselves fresh, and they've been steadily wearing down Big Lou. He needs to get over and tag up with the Invader. A couple of big guys, uh, Lou and the Invader, have got the size. The Invader has never seen the inside of the ring on a uh, legal tag basis, and the Batten boys have really been doing a number, keeping them out of there. They have indeed. Uh, ah, fires one to the midsection. Batten reaches over, makes the tag, and again, punishes the uh, left arm of Big Lou. Big Lou's going to have some problems with that left. Other oh, lashes out. One to the middle section, one to the side of the jaw. Puts Batten down to the canvas. Batten shaking his head and those eyes crossed. He's got some problems now as he's jammed into that turnbuckle. And it is Batten in a lot of trouble here now as Big Lou took all kinds of punishment. And now all of a sudden is really beginning to unload on him, makes the tag. And so the invader who has yet to be in the ring is in there now, having tagged up. Irish whip off the ropes. High backdrop. And that pretty badly stunned on that one. They have him up. Full body slam on Batten. Now, what I was saying a moment ago about uh, Big Lou, I'm saying about the Battens, and they do it, they tag up, and a very necessary thing for them to do. Again, they tag up. Good slide through. Beautiful double drop kick by the Batten brothers. They get the pinfall. They get the pinfall, a beautiful double drop kick by uh, Mark and uh, Brad. The Batten brothers are victorious in this Australian tag team match. All right, let's uh, go back to, uh, we saw him just a moment ago going right back to the basics of wrestling, and you'll get a good idea of what we're talking about right here. And of course, as we said, that's the name on the marquee. Watch here. He's safe at second on this one. Oh, beautiful. Good slide through, exactly. And then uh, there's that teamwork, a double drop kick, and that was the beginning of the end for uh, the Invader. And so uh, the Batten brothers have a uh, very, very successful day to hear on Championship Wrestling, and we'll be back in a moment. Coming up on a one fall, 15 minute time limit match here. One of the teams already in the ring. We're waiting for the appearance of the other, the team of the Terminators. Uh, as soon as they make their way into, uh, into the ring, we will be set to go for this match. And still no appearance from that direction of them. Here they come, coming into the wrestling area right now. And look out. Well, these Terminators not waiting for the pleasure of any kind of introduction whatsoever. Uh, not terribly unlike the uh, interns and their uh, mad dash for uh, their own form of success, Ken Raper and David Johnson, uh, taking an awful lot of punishment uh, right off the bat. And Jimmy Hart outside the ring, obviously very pleased with it. Look at this. Pressing, uh, oh. Pressing David Johnson above his head and then dropping him straight down to the canvas. Using the back of the elbow into the uh, pectoralis majors of uh, Johnson. Got a three count. Johnson tried desperately to tag up and uh, do a power out, but uh, could not. It is all over. And, ooh. And... Uh, Well, it is uh, bedlam and chaos here as uh, they have just gone berserk. Ken Raper's been thrown out of the ring. David Johnson has been uh, demolished and they bring him up once again. The fireman carry and uh, referee Jerry Calhoun trying to get order restored here. Trying to get order restored and it is uh, Johnson being hurtled from the ring. So these Terminators have done exactly what their name implies. They have attempted to terminate. Hey, Russell, I want you to say it, baby. I want you to stand up here in front of thousands and thousands of people to say it so I won't have to. 
What would you like me to say, that they jumped in the ring? I want you to belt? say what I always say, baby, but this time it's for real, baby. This is the greatest team in the history of professional wrestling. That's what I wanted you to say, the Terminators, baby. No, I must say that uh, they're probably uh, one of the most dangerous when they can jump you from behind, which is exactly what they did there. Uh, what they're going to be doing facing somebody head on is uh, another question yeah. indeed. Hart thinks that's a, a real big deal. They come in here and jump a couple of young fellas like that without the benefit of the bell or anything else, and all right away they're world champions in yeah. Hart's mind. Well, uh, what do you say we take time out? We've got plenty of more action coming up. We'll be seeing Johnny Wilhoy, who will be back in action for the first time in quite some time. with action coming up in just a moment right now I got an announcement for the uh, wrestling world out there there's a new mid-america champion and it is the big Canadian Iron Mike Sharp who Mid defeated Kuchinko <laughs> for that title but I think that's important I'm certain to you and to Jimmy Hart but something that's important to the wrestling world how you got it, I want to know about this on your arm. Wait a minute, Mike. Now, it's a legitimate question. This has come into play too many times in there, and too many people want to know about it, and what you're doing with it on, and what's inside of it. Listen, my manager and myself are sick of hearing this. We're disgusted. We're annoyed. Do you think that I want to wear this? Do you think that I like wearing this? Do you think this looks good, that I'm comfortable wearing this? You want to know the real story why I wear yeah, this once and for all right. and put all the people's minds out there to rest? The real story is I'm a great athlete. I'm from Canada, and uh, anybody that knows Canadian hockey knows that I was one of the greatest hockey players to ever put on a pair of skates. I was the biggest, strongest, fastest skater that anybody had ever seen until one night, one night in the Stanley Cup championship, I was illegally checked from behind, and I was critically injured. My arm was smashed. My wrist right here was broken into about 17 different places. And my career was finished. I was demoralized. I was put into a state of absolute depression. I didn't know what to do. Until one night, one night at a sporting event, I met a brilliant, brilliant man by the name of Benedict Holbrook, a great doctor, a great scientist, a great inventor. And he invented this apparatus that I have now put on my wrist. And this enables me to wrestle. Without this, I could not even go in that ring and perform in that ring because my wrist is so badly injured. And all those people, all, all the people and all the opponents that go down to Iron Mike and complain afterwards that I had something in there, they are virtually being beaten by a cripple. That is the truth, by a cripple. That's right. I am a handicapped individual, and I'm getting a little tired of this. I won my matches by virtue of my ability, my guts, my endurance, my training, my scientific approach to professional wrestling, and that's it. And I'm sick of excuses and all this uh, baloney, and that's all it is. Right, Jimmy? That's right, and we don't want to hear it anymore. Now you know the real story that's behind story. it, baby. The man has been a handicap, and that's why he wears this. So you wrestlers out there, don't make any excuses when he beats you. Come on, Iron He's still saying there's nothing in there but the uh, arm. Let's go to Dave. We're about ready for the next piece of action coming up. Got a single match coming up right now. That's Aaron Holt stepping up uh, onto the ring apron, through the ropes, and into the ring. And coming in right now, young man out of Lexington, Kentucky. Back in the wrestling ring now for this one fall 10 minute time limit match out of Tupelo, Mississippi at 240 pounds, introducing Aaron Holt. And going against him from Lexington, Kentucky at 220 pounds, Johnny Wilhoy. One fall 10 minute time limit. The referee is Jerry Calhoun. Johnny Wilhoy, a, uh, an impressive young man who uh, suffered a pretty serious injury a while back and apparently uh, uh, has found himself back at 100 percent and brother he is fast this Next. young fella gordon i think has got one of the finest drop kicks in professional wrestling you can take a look at those legs he's got a set of legs on him boy they are spring steel no question about that and that was a beautiful drop down go behind and take down by uh, will hoyt he is a, a chain wrestler obviously and is extremely well versed. All right, side headlock now by Aaron Holt. Holt 
the much the taller of the two, and uh, about a 25-pound weight advantage. Caught in a head scissors. Both trying to power out, uh, but to no avail. The young fellow from Lexington is keeping him uh, well trapped. He's got that leg on the rope, however, and that'll force the break. All right, let's watch Willoy. Now, he's, you know, I would imagine, too, any time that you're coming off of an injury like this, you have to be a little bit uh, dubious about yourself and worrying whether or not the, the injury is going to reoccur. Good high back drop. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true, Gordon. He's got to have that in the back of his mind. Johnny almost looks like he... Uh, uh, is compensating in that he is wrestling very hyper. He's look at that drop kick. Whoa! He was over six feet in the air with that one. Over six feet in the air. And so Johnny Wilhoy doesn't have to worry any longer. Uh, he indeed has proven that he's back and not only at 100%, but 110%. Let's see, see if we can't take a look at that once again. You'll see exactly what we're talking about in a drop kick. And as Lance said, this man's got steel springs in his legs. Look at this. Well over six feet in the air when he caught him with that and almost ripped his head off. Beautiful, beautiful pinfall coming out of that drop kick by Johnny Wilhoyd. He's back in shape. Well, we've got a situation, you know, that continues to boil, and that's uh, this uh, uh, situation with Rick Rude and uh, Jerry Lawler. Oh, uh, yeah. You mentioned that a little earlier in the opening of the program. Uh, it just is absolutely creating waves all through the wrestling world as uh, Lawler makes no bones about it. He never liked uh, Rude and Rude returns a favor by uh, trying to go out and tear up his automobile a second time. And I think it'd be well, Gordon, if we just did a little recap and uh, talk because it is of such significance. It is indeed. And I'll tell you one thing, too, that I certainly want to compliment, and that is uh, uh, you talk about an alert camera crew. Uh, we've got a Mesa's eye right here, as you're going to be seeing in just a moment. Let's go back and take a look at that incident. Come here, payback, payback, baby. Payback, Where and that's what it's going? about. Come here, Russell. I want you to walk with me over here, Russell. Come here. Come, come on, on, Jimmy. Russell, now, come what on. is all come this here, stuff? Russell, we got on. a match coming up come here. On, come on, come on. Hey, Rude. Come with me, Russell. What are you doing? I got a big match coming up this week, and you're the special referee. And so, from me to you, if you mess me around, you're a dead man. Because you're right, just because we're partners, we don't have to be friends. And I realize we ain't friends, brother, because you've done a lot to me in the past, and I haven't forgotten about it. Well, come on, Rick. Uh, I, I, I think That's the way it is. Man. Well, I think you've made your point. Let you me make my point, Lance. You don't have to try to make excuses for him. First of all, I don't like you sticking your stinking finger in my chest. Oh, and second of all, let me tell you this. You're right. There are a lot of things that you've not easily forgotten. I'll never forget as long as I live the day that you trotted out in this parking lot and took a baseball bat like a yellow coward and smashed in my car. I won't forget. I'm that. telling you, you mess me around and you're a dead man because to me, don't you ain't nothing. Don't put your finger in my chest anymore. You don't tell me what to do. I do what I want. Come on, Rick. Don't now. touch me anymore, all right? Eat. Let me just, all right, I'll tell you what, Rude. If you're not really not happy about me being the special referee in this match, I'm not tickled to death about it myself. Eddie Marlin came to me, as I said, and asked me to do it, brother. I'm not doing it as any favors to you, because as far as I care, you can go take a flying leap. Do you understand that? And furthermore, just to settle any, just to settle any conversation, just to make sure that there'll be no problem, I won't referee your stinking match, okay? We'll just, you just go out and get your own referee, because I'll tell you what, if I did, I would rather see Bundy stay here than you, you big jerk, okay? Do you understand that? As far as I'm concerned, Rude, as far as I'm concerned, and listen, and listen real close, you can go to hell, jerk. Uh, and you don't come out here, and you don't humiliate me. Now, I might not have a baseball bat punch, but I could take care of business just as well. Come on, Ricky. For Lawler's car, I can't believe this stupid. Uh -oh, wait a minute. Lawler caught him from behind. And we've got a pier sixer going on in the parking lot, Lance. Right outside the sports arena, and, and it's Lawler grabbing Rude. 
And I don't blame him for that because he was heading out there to bash a car in again. Lawler and Rude out there pounding each other on the concrete. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, somebody's going to have to bring this thing to a halt. All right, we do have some men out there now trying to get them separated. But you talk about a Pier 6 brawl, they're uh, separating Rude and uh, Jerry Lawler at this time. And, oh, brother, he's right back at it again. And Jerry the King Lawler, not afraid of anyone, and neither is Rick Rude, obviously. And so... Uh, Eddie Marlin out there, Gordon, trying to get things. I'll tell you one thing, it's going to take a bunch of them, my horses, to hold those guys. Well, I can't say that I blame uh, Jerry Lawler at all for, uh, you know, he didn't want to have happened to his automobile what happened once before. And it was pretty obvious that that's exactly what Rick Rude had in mind when he went out there with that. As is our custom, of course, each week here on Championship Wrestling, we do a, a child search for a missing child. And this week, we'd like to bring to your attention uh, Dathan Lee Wilson. Dathan Lee Wilson, he's 6'2", weighs 160 pounds, brown hair, blue eyes. He has long, curly hair. Uh, this youngster has been missing uh, for several months. Anyone having any information on him, please call 901 528-8400. That number again is 901-528-8400. Dathan Lee Wilson. If you have seen this youngster, please call this number uh, as quickly as you can. All right, let's go uh, back to uh, Lance. I think we've got some more action upcoming. Yeah, coming up, we'll be in the ring with the National Tag Chains in just a moment, Gordon. Uh, it's marvelous, too, the way the people have cooperated on this child church. We really appreciate it. Well, coming out right now, uh, Jimmy Hart and one of the biggest men around in the world, Big Cowboy Frazier. You better believe it, not Big Boy. Hey, that's all, let me tell him, Frazier. Let me tell him, John. You know, I've got a very big announcement to make today, a very big announcement. And if you can look next to me, you'll see one of the biggest men in professional wrestling, if not the biggest man. You know, the John has been with me for many years, baby, the backbone of the first family, right or wrong? I've had him as the giant rebel, right or wrong? Right. He's been Kamala the Ugandan giant, right? right number two. He's been the Long Ranger, right? Right. But in all of those, and he's been Cowboy Frazier, but he's always been very successful. But to be successful in life, like me, you just must be yourself. You just gotta be natural, baby, and everything good happens for you. So baby, today on TV, baby, in front of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people watching, this is not going to be called Plowboy Frazier anymore. Not the giant rebel. Not the Ugandan giant Kamala. He's not going to be called the Long Ranger. Today, he's just going to be himself. And it's just simply Playboy Frazier. Now, you know why we call him Playboy? No, Jimmy, I well, don't. Well, I'm going to tell you why we call him Playboy. Because that's natural for him. Look at this man's jewelry. $15,000 nugget right here with diamonds in it, baby. Show him this. Come here. Get a close-up of this jewelry here, baby. Zoom in. Can you zoom in on the Wake up behind the camera there, number two. There you go. Wake up and come on in. Oh, they're still asleep. But look at this right here, baby. Look at these diamonds. Diamonds and gold. Now look at this bracelet. $25,000 for this, baby. This is the real Frazier. Playboy Frazier. I think he's got something he would like to say right now. Do not call me Plowboy. I am Playboy Frazier. Jimmy Hart is the greatest man I've ever known in my life. He is my manager. He is the greatest manager in the world. Channel 17, all over the world. I'm going to the top, and I don't have very, very much further to make it, brother. Look how big he is. And like I said, all you girls, baby, when we stay in those hotels, quit calling this man through. How many girls called you last week, Frazier? Thousand girls. Thousands of girls. They even sent their underwear into this man. And don't send any more to us, because we don't want them, baby. The closet is full. This is the new era in professional. Jimmy Jr., get over and fix the man's coat for him right there. Fix him up right here. Like I said, from now on, it's not Plowboy Frazier. It's Playboy Frazier. And you people shut up over there. I don't want to OK, Jimmy and Playboy Frazier. Playboy. I understand. Let's go to the ring and Dave. World famous, Les. World famous. All right, we're standing by here for our expiration of time match today. This one goes as long as there's time remaining. We'll have wrestling action. Might be one fall, might be three or four. Then the team with the most falls to their credit. When the time runs out, we'll be the winners of this match. It is going to go to the expiration of time, and tag team rules are in effect. National Tag Team Champion stepping up in the area right now. 
Total weight 428 pounds. Introducing from Memphis, Tennessee, Keith Eric. And from St. Petersburg, Florida, John King. Going against them at 548 pounds from the USA, the national tag team champions, the Long Riders. Match to the expiration of time, your referee, Jerry Calhoun. Okay, Scott and Bill Irwin, the Long Riders, are the national tag team champions. They're an impressive pair. They're a rugged pair. They, uh, hold very little respect for uh, any of their competitors and it's evidenced by the way they manhandle their competitors in the ring but uh, one cannot take away from the fact that they are double tough lads yeah they uh, they're big they're rugged all american boys they aren't though gordon <laughs> yeah, that's uh, for sure oh. and uh well, it was interesting to see plowboy frazier again uh, Playboy, uh, Gordon, did you hear that? Playboy phrase here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, the uh, Long Riders now doubling up on uh, John King. John King, of course, out of St. Petersburg, Florida. And I had an opportunity to watch this uh, young fellow uh, in his high school athletic career. And uh, he had a varied background. He's a fine competitor, but he's giving away a lot of weight here and he's also a proponent of the uh, scientific methods of wrestling and of course you're not going to find that with the long riders there's nothing about them that is very scientific at all king trying to get over to make that tag and if he can get over there to tag up with keith eric he's caught in the front chance right now by the long riders keeping the front chance the long riders They've got uh, an impressive amateur background as well. And it's King again, hurtled into the boot. Irwin now. Picks it up and it is uh, Keith Eric making the tag and Keith Eric beginning to suffer the same fate that uh, John King was suffering. Keith Eric. Caught by the Long Riders. Remember, the Long Riders are the national tag team champions. They're about as double tough as you'll find. There's about 270 pounds right down across the throat of uh, Keith Eric. And you can hear Irwin shouting over here, tell him to get up, will you? Well, uh, let him up and maybe he will. Irwin screaming about they want competition. Well, I'll tell you what. Keith Eric doing everything that he can, but that punch was ineffectual. Caught in the pit of the stomach that time by Irwin. The long rider brings him up. Another full body slam by the long rider. And again, now you hear Irwin saying, come on, get up, I want to fight. Well, John King's had a chance for a respite. Maybe he'll be uh, capable of uh, giving the man what he wants. Excellent gut wrench salto executed by Irwin. And they make the tag. And so Jerry Calhoun beginning to have some problems with the long run. And you can hear when still speaking about competition. John King explodes into the ring, and as he does, he's catching Irwin a series to the midsection, one to the side of the jaw, an Irish whip. Ooh. King tried to set him for a backdrop, and it was uh, Irwin a step ahead. A headbutt now by King, and that time King caught by a rabbit punch at the base of the skull. Uh, boot to the midsection again that puts King back to the canvas. Once again, back to the side headlock. All right, the Long Riders tag up. And it's a clubbing like blow across the thoracic area of the back of uh, John King. Now a bear hug coming underneath the rib cage. And that'll force the air out of the lungs. And as you force the air out of the lungs, if the right supply of oxygen get into that bloodstream, that lactic acid does not burn off. And if it doesn't burn off, heavy fatigue sets in. So uh, that's why breathing becomes such a very, very uh, critical part of the sport. And so it's Hog Irwin in there now, driving the knee once again to the abdominal wall of John King and King. Really sucking for air now. 
comes with a glancing blow to the midsection. Another one that did not have authority. Got him with a drop kick, and that took uh, every bit of energy that he had, and he's uh, repaid in kind with a boot to the back of the head. Then a boot into the shoulder. And so the Long Riders continue to dominate the situation here with uh, John King and Keith Eric. Again, that bear hug, and again, forcing that air out of the lungs of uh, John King. You can continue to hear the uh, Irwin shouting about no competition, no competition. There's a looping right hand, almost an uppercut now by uh, the Long Riders, and they tag up once again. Scott and Bill Irwin, and they drive a uh, boot into the midsection. Another snap mare that takes uh, uh, Keith Eric to the canvas. The rear chin lock now by the long rider. Referee Jerry Calhoun, quick repuncture check there to make sure it was not a choke. Excellent close up. And, uh, Irwin driving a uh, boot right into the uh, chest of uh, Keith Eric. They get the three count. Oh, that's it. They get the three count. Of course, this is a... Uh... All right, we're going to be able to take a look at that uh, instant replay once again in this first fall of uh, this match with television time remaining. Here you see the uh, Irish whip coming off the ropes. Now uh, watch Irwin. Both feet mm. off the ground, and brother, he oh. delivered a size 14 right into the chest. Oh, that got the pinfall. Mm -hmm. Big long riders win the first fall of the expiration of time match. We're going to take time out. I think our time is running away. And now we're oh, going to take oh, a look yeah. at uh, the long riders in another match. Yeah, really. Okay, Bill. All fine. Right. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'm Tommy under Wildfire wild. Rich and Brad Armstrong, quite a team going against the long riders. We're going to show you some highlights of it right now. All right, there you see him, uh, wild, wild swing, and Brad Armstrong tried to set him up with that uh, Russian leg sweep, and uh, the long riders, as usual, double teaming. The referee is uh, uh, down and out, uh, Scrappy McGowan, tolling the count, but it was uh, obviously that was not the right count. And uh, well, you see Jimmy Hart in there, uh -oh. and. Uh, He's about to get himself uh, into a bit of a jackpot here, but the Long Riders uh, holding, in my opinion, an ill-gotten victory here, and Tommy Wildfire Rich is letting him know about it. Yeah, I think Hart was uh, doing a little payoff to get Rich, because Rich, of course, is the one that uh, put him in a neck brace with some pile drivers himself, uh, Gordon. Precisely, and ooh, Rich caught with a lariat coming off the ropes, and there's a very gleeful uh, Jimmy Hart. But I will say one thing, that uh, Tommy Wildfire Rich is a long way from being done with uh, the Long Riders, regardless of who he has to get for a tag team partner. This was in the Omni in uh, Atlanta, and it was it was quite a, tank, quite a team with Armstrong and Rich together, but the Long Riders, as you point out, did prevail. They did indeed by taking advantage of the situation as it was. But anyway, we thought you might enjoy taking another look. We'll be back in just a moment. You know, Lance, in retrospect, looking over what's happened during this past hour, and you, you take a look at the team of the interns, and you take a look at the, uh, the Terminators, uh, and then these long riders, uh, doggone it, things don't look <laughs> really good for our side of the street, so to speak. Oh, yeah, I got to tell you, this is when you start calling out the militia, when you start getting all of those guys in one place in there, because yeah. they're all rugged teams, and they have very little respect for any kind of rules or regulations in or out of the ring, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm afraid that is the case, and it is uh, encouraging to see that young Mr. Constant is improving, but is still out of action. But I'll tell you, it's going to take, uh, well, it's going to take, in my opinion, a team like maybe Ole Anderson and Thunderbolt Patterson, or maybe Tommy Wildfire Rich and uh, Luscious Jimmy Valiant. Uh, it's going to take that kind of a combination uh, 
uh, I think, to turn back somebody like the Long Riders or the Terminators or these interns. Yeah, you're uh, exactly right in the fact that uh, the desire and the, the courage and all of that is fine, and you've got to have it to get there. But it's going to take experience, guys that have been in there with some of these big, rugged son-of-a-guns before, Gordon, before they're ever going to be able to take on some of these tag teams, and particularly a team like that Long Rider. Man, they are big. They yeah. got to go right at what a total of 600 pounds. Or Has something to be like real that. close to that, yeah. Well, then you've got, uh, of course, you got Ronnie Garvin and Ron Ritchie. It's another good combination that uh, I think could give them a hard way to go. But uh, certainly, right now, I would say that here on Championship Wrestling, tag team matching uh, matches are at their absolute peak. In addition to the experience, you got to have guys who are willing to duke it out. If they feel it's necessary, they're going to have to throw some shots at the at the Long Riders or Terminators or anybody else, and. Uh, uh, the fellows that you've been mentioning, those are exactly the kind of guys that can handle that kind of action. They are indeed. Okay, that's all the time. So on behalf of Lance Russell, this will be Gordon Soley saying so long. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling. <laughs>